Merry Christmas. Welcome to the live stream mass at St. Joseph and a very special welcome to all our guests and visitors. Today, we celebrate light, hope, peace, eternal love, God's gift to us in Jesus, Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Let us rejoice and give thanks. Please join us in our gathering song, O Come, All Ye Faithful. everybody and welcome to our live stream mass for Christmas Eve. I would begin with a uh, Merry Christmas, but I don't think I can top Sonny's Merry Christmas, as he said with that robust uh, bass voice, but Merry Christmas nonetheless to all of you. And uh, how I wish that you were here with us in the Basilica to celebrate this marvelous solemnity of our Lord's birth. Uh, nevertheless, we are united to each other in our love for our God who came to us in his humility, who desired to be born and to live here with us so that he could share life's moments with us, our joys, but even our sadnesses and our sorrows to walk with us, to lift us up and to bring us light. And so as we begin this celebration, we would like to impart a small blessing upon our nativity scene that all who look upon it will uh, be drawn into the love and the beauty of this uh, holy family, their love for one another, their devotion to one another, to doing God's will. May we be a, a part of this, as St. Joseph is our patron. May he lead us uh, to our Blessed Mother and closer and closer to Jesus Christ. God of every nation and people, from the beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a savior was great, you sent your son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice and mercy and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus 
and raise up our thoughts to him who is God with us and Savior of all, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we begin this celebration, we first prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins and asking God for his pardon and for his peace. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed. As on the day of Midian, for every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For as a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God hero, father forever, prince of peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we wait the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. From the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy, that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign. You will find an infant wrapped in a swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Earlier in the week, I saw a a very uh, interesting headline from an article stating that due to some new uh, lockdown restrictions in the United Kingdom, that, quote, Christmas had been canceled. 
And maybe some of you watching at home feel the same way, that our government officials are making things more difficult on us and maybe doing more long-term harm by shutting things down the way that they are. But in thinking about that headline, the question that came to me was, is what our government, is what our government uh, is asking from us or demanding of us, some might say, is that enough, really, to cancel Christmas? And I say no. And I'm not denying that it's difficult to not be in the Basilica together right now. It is. I'm not denying that it's difficult to not be able to be at home with extended family and friends. It is. But the fact that you're watching this right now is proof that Christmas can't be canceled as easily as some people might think. If what Christmas means to some is shopping and having parties, well then yes, Christmas might be canceled for them this year. But if Christmas means entering into this mystery of God becoming man for us, if Christmas, Christmas means deciding to create a space for him to be born within your heart, then the truth is, Christmas can never be canceled. For the past month, we've been in the season of Advent, preparing for this day. But if we think about it, the whole year has been like one long Advent, a long winter, a long wait for light to come. This means that far from thinking that Christmas is canceled, we should actually be able to have an even better one this time around, a truer one, a more authentic one. Because, you see, the very first Christmas was not so different from the one we are experiencing this year. With Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem, there was uncertainty and fear, much like we're feeling now. And upon arrival, there was probably discouragement and maybe even a sense of failure, all because of the census imposed upon them by their ruling government. The first Christmas was difficult, and that's putting it lightly. Can you imagine being totally rejected by a town full of people and having to take shelter in an animal stall, which some would liken more to a cave? If the story were to end there, it would be a real tragedy, not good news, not gospel. But I know what you're thinking. That's not how the story ends. And you're right. Because in that cave, Mary was about to give birth to the Son of God. And from the depths of that dark place where Mary and Joseph huddled close together, all of their discouragement was about to be completely wiped away. Isaiah the prophet said it this way, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. And isn't that the true meaning of Christmas? That there are two sides to this amazing day, darkness and light, discouragement and hope, fear and joy. This is the reason why we celebrate today, and why Christmas can never be canceled. Because even though this life is tinged with all sorts of dark moments, when brought into contact with Jesus Christ, who is Lord, the discouragement, the fear, the darkness, they all flee. That was the message of the angels to the shepherds, those living on the literal peripheries, but also the social ones as well. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Do not be afraid. That simple line gets repeated over and over again in these stories about Jesus' birth. To Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, to Mary at the Annunciation by the angel Gabriel, and to Joseph in his dream. 
Yes, life is difficult. It throws unexpected burdens upon us. Sometimes we feel completely unprepared, insuffi in insufficient, lost, and alone. And you're, you're looking at the epitome of that. But in all of this, God speaks to us. Do not be afraid. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. That love that God has for you, that cannot be canceled. And I know you know that. That's why you're watching this. You know that no matter what life throws at you, no matter how challenging it may seem, God is with you. I've seen this over and over again in my short stint as a priest, people courageously bearing their crosses. And I think that's why God called me to be a priest, so I could witness these moments in people's lives and be strengthened by them. And recently, I've seen it in a man and his family who have been a part of this community for many years, although the man is not Catholic. In this past year, he has been putting up the valiant fight against an increasingly tenacious form of cancer. In October, I met him at his house for the first time, where he told me that amidst the dark reality that has enveloped him, he wants to become Catholic. And people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, right? So today, after bringing our own lessons of Bishop Barron's Catholicism series and Pope Francis's catechesis on the sacraments to an end, despite the fatigue of both body and mind that he was feeling, we celebrated the sacraments of confirmation and first Eucharist and welcomed him into full communion with the Catholic Church. And I don't think he'll mind me saying this, but as he sat on the couch with his wife and daughters nestled around him, he cried tears of joy. And some say that Christmas has been canceled. No, my dear brothers and sisters, even if we have to watch Christmas Mass on YouTube, Christmas cannot be canceled. If there are people who are brave enough to follow Mary and Joseph into life's dark moments, Christmas cannot be canceled. If there are people who are humble enough to admit like the shepherds, that they need a Lord and a Savior, then Christmas cannot be canceled. Christ is knocking at your heart, which I know can sometimes feel like a dark cave that is inaccessible to light. Trust me, I know. Let him in. And I guarantee this Christmas will be like none you've ever had before. We rise together and profess our faith as we say together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God, who give us peace and hope, enlighten our hearts to the true meaning of Christmas as we raise our voices in prayer. For Pope Francis and all leaders of our church, that they may proclaim in their words and actions the good news of Jesus to all the world, we pray to the Lord. for peace on earth to all peoples, for an end to darkness and division, for justice and freedom from oppression, we pray to the Lord. For families everywhere, that they may come together this Christmas in hope, reconciliation, and joyful celebration. And for our military women and men who will be away from their families this Christmas, we pray to the Lord. For those who struggle to make Christmas holidays a joy, a joyful time for themselves and their families, for the lonely and the sorrowful, we pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who are sick, especially Jan Curtis, Lloyd Nowakowski, Greg Faulkner, Rogelio Rianjo, Ida Kempel, John B.J. Espinosa, David McGaffey, John Farrow, Bonnie Stanhoff, Rena Salud, and those stricken with the coronavirus and for the doctors, nurses, and medical specialists who work tirelessly to fight the virus, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of those who have died, especially Darlene Peters, Ron Zaludic, Ruth Irwin, and Thomas Astle Jr., we pray to the Lord. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, you desire to be born in us today. Teach us to love as you love, 
you who are God, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with the praise and glory of his name, for all glory belongs to the Church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor, when our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating this most sacred night, on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace in heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who, art who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us, us from evil. From evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Michael and was going to play Silent Night during the uh, communion right there, and I'm glad I asked him to wait until after, or else you would have had this crash during the Silent Night. So now we're going to listen attentively and in true silence to this beautiful hymn that speaks about the scene that we just heard of in the gospel. And we invite Christ who is knocking at the door of our hearts into our lives that maybe sometimes feel like the darkness is too much for us to handle. We invite him in and ask him to shed that light upon us. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, 
that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 Well, we invite you to join us tomorrow for drive through communion. We're going to be doing that at the uh, normal time of from 1.30 to 2. And so I uh, should give you enough time to open presents. And if you're doing that with your small group, to do that and grab some food and then come on over and receive our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. So we'll be there, I think, regardless of rain. It's probably not supposed to rain until a little bit after that, but we'd love to see you there and celebrate Christmas Day by um, being in communion, enjoying Holy Communion together. So thank you again for joining us and have a wonderful night and a wonderful Christmas season that extends uh, not just through tomorrow, but the next three weekends. We have uh, Holy Family this upcoming weekend, and then the Feast of the Epiphany, the three wise men, and then after that, the baptism of Jesus. So we continue to celebrate this season, even after the stores have closed up and have moved on and have forgot about it, we continue to celebrate our Lord's coming to live among us. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. And may the blessing of almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.